In the previous video, we did all the legwork for our fertilizer facility project on the layout. In this video, we're going to take everything to the next level. We're going to model some chain link fence and gates. We're going to scratch build a couple of structures. And then we're going to use weathering and details to bring this facility to life. That's coming up. Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. So in part one of our uh, fertilizer facility build we got the basics down we got the track work installed our basic building installed and we built the cars that are going to service our facility in this uh, video we are going to continue working on the actual facility you can see i've got chain link fence and gates already built and installed and that's just the start of it so first things first i've got to fix this white spot on the wall i didn't finish the backdrop around the corner here it's driving me crazy so we're gonna get color on this portion of the wall so that the backdrop kind of blends. I'm using a sky blue um, on the top third, and then I have blue cotton that I use on the bottom third, and then I just get a wet brush and then I blend it in the middle third. And that's worked out pretty cool. That's given me this backdrop here, so it has a little bit of variation. My old layout, I just went with a solid blue, and I tried this technique, I learned this from uh, Monster Railroad's channel and I really like it so that's what I went with. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this photo backdrop down just a little bit, get the paint on it, and then I'll push it back up and use the paint as an adhesive. Alright, I got the backdrop completed. That looks so much better. On to the next project. So the next project is scratch building a couple of metal buildings. Uh, to replicate the uh, buildings on the prototype. These are just built out of uh, sheet styrene. Uh, I just figured out the measurements that I needed to fit the footprint on my uh, facility and then I just went to work. Okay, so I've got my four sides to my building cut out here and I've got some overhead doors from microengineering that we'll use. Let me open these up. I picked these up at the hobby shop. So here's an overhead door. This will fit in here. And then I, I picked up a couple packs of those while I was there, just so I had them because I knew I was going to do a bunch of uh, buildings. And then here's some man doors. So I'll open this pack. I picked up a couple packs of these as well. Um, it was just worth it with the drive and everything. And then we'll put a man door here. It looks like that'll fit just fine. So I think what we'll do is we'll paint the walls to our building, the white color to match the rest of the um, buildings in our at our fertilizer facility. We'll paint the doors, I think green, and then here's the roof. So I think we'll paint it green as well to kind of match um, the rest of the buildings there. So with all the parts cut out, I just used some Mr. Cement to go ahead and weld it all together. I used some quarter inch by quarter inch square tubing at each one of the corners just to give me some more glue surface and to help hold everything square. Once I got this glued up, I took it out in the garage and I hit it with a coat of paint. Okay guys, so I got the buildings all painted up. I painted the, the walls of the buildings white. Painted the roofs green to match the other buildings. Same thing with the doors and the overhead doors. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get some of the Mr. Cement and I'll work to get these uh, glued together and then we can start working on uh, detailing them. So now that everything's ready, we're gluing it together, just using the Mr. Cement for the uh, weld for the bond between the roof section and the wall section. I use the old rubber band trick uh, for the oddball shape and then uh, followed suit with the uh, doors, getting those set. So let's take a look at what these look like out on the layout. All right guys, so here's our scratch built buildings that we've been working on. These were our placeholders. And these are the two that we built earlier in the video, kind of custom sized for this. This is gonna work out great for where our fence comes. The color scheme kind of gives the scene some continuity, the facility some continuity. So the next thing we're going to do is get going with the details. We'll take these buildings off 
and we'll do a little bit of weathering to them. I want to add some more details to the um, outside, maybe some electrical panels, some conduit, just to give them a little bit more um, uh, visual interest. Same thing over here. We'll probably stage a few pallets, maybe some buckets, that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then we'll start putting some weeds in. We'll add some fencing. We'll start out in the detail pieces and uh, we'll come back and take a look at it. So I'm just using some of these pastels to, again, add just a little bit of grit and grime to this. It's out in the country uh, where the wind blows, trucks are going by, so dirt's going to be everywhere. So I'm just making up my own little kind of dirt here. I don't want to go too dark. You can always add more, but once you go dark, it's real hard to bring it back. I'm just adding a little bit here and a little bit there. And then once I get it on there, I can just take a brush and just kind of brush it around a little bit. And this is where you want your models, uh, if they are uh, finished in a mat, it's kind of nice because the, the surface is more adept to, to grab some of the weathering versus a, versus a, um, I'm sorry, uh, a gloss where it's a little smoother finish and the chalks and stuff have a little bit harder time grabbing onto it, the surface. So I don't want it to be destroyed, but it's got a little bit of character there. So that's good. I think that's going to be perfect right there. I do want to, however, add a little bit to the, to the roof just to break that green up so that it looks just a little bit dirty is all. A little bit of, maybe that there's some moss growing on it or something. That's all I'm looking for. I'm not looking to change the color, just to kind of add a little variety. Is That's all I'm doing here. And for those of you who are watching this, who are really good at this, if you've got any pointers, put them in the comments because this is new to me. And uh, again, I'm trying to get better at this. I'm watching a few different uh, channels to learn some of these techniques and my modeling is getting better. It's improving. So I'll go to work on these two buildings here and get them weathered up a little bit and then I'll come back. I'll show you a little bit on here. I think you can see it a little bit better. So I'm just adding a little bit of powder in here. And then one thing I can do, I just figured this out, is I can rub my finger over some of this and get it to bite a little bit and then use the brush. It all depends on the, the type of um, siding or material you're using, but and then I'm just gonna go with the, with the pattern. Look at that. That looks like an old dirty farm building. So that's pretty cool. Again, just kinda not going crazy, just flicking a little bit of color on here and then I can rub it in a little bit with my fingers or just use the the brush and if your styrene has just a little bit of a, of a pattern to it or a texture to it it really brings out like now you can see the details in this overhead door panel you can see the panel lines I can actually see some of the connection the little rivets or screws so and that's just from the um, from these chalks. I couldn't really see them before, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, okay, I'll get these going. So in these next few photos, you're gonna see the scene really start to come to life as I start setting the uh, finished models that we've built. The storage tanks are set in place, plumb and level. The scratch built building is set in place. You can see I've got conduit going up the side wall. I'm starting to put some of the weeds in, the track bumpers are in. So we're starting to bring this scene to life. Okay guys, let's talk about this uh, fence that I built. So I watched a video from Boomer Diorama. I'm a subscriber to his channel. Um, his modeling is next level and I wanna take mine to a, 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 another level from where I'm at. So I watch his videos and draw inspiration and he showed how to make um, this chain link fence using uh, styrene 
and then I think it's called tool. It's the stuff they make wedding veils out of. And uh, it looks really good. There's a few spots where I got some super glue on the fencing. And then when I painted it, um, it's a little buggered up here. But I have a, I have a plan for that. Um, I thought about using this paintbrush. I've got some long grass and I got this paintbrush just because I wanted a variety of colors. I'll just cut this off here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll glue a little bit of some of these longer weeds right along this fence line here to kind of help hide those. Because you see that out in um, rural facilities. They're not kept up the best sometimes. So that'll be a real good way that I'm gonna try to hide that. Um, so I'm gonna set that one aside. So here's the first two sections of this that I built. And it's gonna go over the, um, over the rails that come into our facility. And I just made these super easy um, hinges using some, whoops, some tube styrene that's a little bit wider and then just super glue them together and they work great. Uh, so these are pretty cool. They turn out good. There's a little bit of that super glue. Again, I got a little carried away. Um, these were the very first ones that I did. Um, so what I'm gonna do again is I'll, I'll just put a few weeds in the fence line. I think that'll add to the overall look of the facility. So I've got that. Here's another little section of fence. This gate didn't work out. Um, I got some super glue on the, the hinge portion. So what I did is I just cut it off and I'm just gonna have it open. These two will come together at the main entrance to the facility. So they're just gonna stay open. And these ones are to where the rail line comes in. So it's kind of just a kind of a neat little deal. Um, but anyways, again, I'll put a little bit of um, dried weeds and stuff in there to kind of help blend in some of the spots where you can see the super glue a little bit. But that's one of the things we're gonna add to our facility. So here's a couple other things that I've been working on. So these are some pallets that I made. I use three pieces of, let me get it up here, 16th by 16th basswood for the bottoms and then some strips of 020 styrene for the top. I painted them with some brown paint that I had. I think next time I'll go with a lighter brown. And then I just use some of those pastels to add some weathering to them. And these are gonna look great scattered around our facility. All right guys, so here's some photos of this thing coming together. You can see there's a stack of old pies that I did. Um, you can just see the buildings going into place that we scratch built in this video. The fencing, um, putting the weeds along the fence helped work to cover where I screwed up with the super glue. Just adding all kinds of odds and ends, just little details. I had some, uh, I think it's 5 30 seconds tubing left, so I just made a bunch of pipe and put a pile of pipe in there. I built some conduit and electrical cabinets that go on to the side of the buildings. Just kept adding details, layers and layers and layers. This one turned out pretty cool. We can always add more of those pallets. There's a couple of them. We did the weathering of the track in the first video. I mean, there's lots of stuff that we put into this. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're into this kind of stuff. This is what we do on the Kit Bashers channel. Appreciate your guys' time. Thanks for watching and happy railroading.